Alrighty, the new update from Steel City has just been released. So let's quickly recap the weird series of events which have left many of us feeling like this update will determine the fate of Undisputed. January the 31st, 2023. Undisputed was released to the public in the form of an early access. And to be completely frank, you couldn't have asked for an easier path to success. Steel City had all the cards stacked in their favor. Boxing had found a new wind of life thanks to Fury, Wilder, Influencer Boxing, just to name a few. I mean, this was an untapped gaming market left in the dust by EA Games. So the gates were wide open for Steel City to license and collaborate with real boxers, governing bodies, which in turn would sell to the public a level of expertise, authenticity, and trust. Now, unfortunately for Steel City, it seems they may have lacked the foresight to be prepared for issues which commonly arise in online competitive play. However, luckily, their core audience showed empathy despite frustration. We wanted Undisputed to succeed. We continued to give them benefit of doubt that they could fix these issues. However, as Steel City went on to release their solutions or lack thereof, we began to see a divide in public opinion. To keep influencers playing the game online and capitalizing off of the free promotion, Steel City had two key problems to solve. Problem one, there was an influx of players using cheats and hacks to win matches and climb the online ranks. Steel City chose to manually ban players as their primary solution instead of implementing an anti-cheat system. Problem two, players exploiting broken fighting mechanics. Now these game killing exploits have been voiced by the community since forever. But with the update finally here, let's take a gander and and see if Steel City's decision making has paid off. Let's begin with gameplay changes. We've changed the damage health system from six individual damage zones into one overall head zone and one overall body zone. I mean, that's amazing. That is a game changer right there. No longer will you have to target one side of the head to achieve a daze. Great job, Steel City. We changed the damage threshold used to calculate daze chance. Fighters are now more likely to hit their opponent into daze by mixing up punches and landing combinations. Again, another fantastic update. This is similar to UFC Undisputed 3, a great addition to gameplay. We've reduced the movement speed of fighters that are dazed, making it more achievable for players to be able to cut off the ring and secure a finish when an opponent is hurt. Now they haven't been specific who this is applied to but I would assume they're talking about overpowered fighters. Added a warning to the in-fight UI that will show a player if they're close to being dazed and removed the sectional body part UI. The curve has been reduced across overall stamina or stamina regeneration which means fighters with higher rated stamina have a less steep advantage. Okay again another excellent addition playing as the underdog I often have to hold back my shots due to the imbalance in stamina. Thank you Steel City for the even playing field. Now for those who enjoy single player AI update. Overhauled our AI system. The new system should allow us to control and adjust more elements of the AI's gameplay with the update. Players should see that the AI has improved ring movement, punch and stamina management, and weaving or dodging. Players can expect to see continued improvements including a more noticeable difference between fighter styles like slugger vs outboxer over time. New fighters. Vasily Lomachenko added to the game with his own unique movement, swift footwork and signature directional punches. Lomachenko joins the featherweight and lightweight divisions. Amir Khan added to the game. Khan joins the lightweight, welterweight and middleweight divisions. Floyd Patterson added to the game and introduces the peekaboo style to Undisputed. Patterson joins the heavyweight division. Daniel Jacobs added to the game. Jacobs joins the middleweight division. Now these fighters are a great addition but they don't fix the issues in the game. We move on to fighter changes. Ooh, <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Health regeneration reduced from 97 to 95. Head health reduced from 95 to 92. Body health reduced from 96 to 92. Hook modifier reduced from 93 to 90. Counter punch modifier reduced from 95 to 93. And courage increased from 92 to 97. And Ali's gonna need all the courage he can get now that he's essentially been nerfed. However, we do need to put this in practice to see if his hook of death still exists. Deontay Wilder. We're experimenting with a tiered system for fighter traits that will allow us to further fine tune specific fighters like Wilder so that they feel more like themselves. So what I think they mean here is the knockout artist trait for Wilder has the ability to be tuned up or tuned down without affecting the knockout artist trait 
for let's say Joe Frazier. So added the knockout artist trait, conditioning reduced from 90 to 88, endurance reduced from 92 to 89. I think that's a good move. Right hand power increased from 96 to 98. Yes. Straight modifier increased from 97 to 98. Counter punch modifier increased from 84 to 88. Accuracy increased from 84 to 88. Not bad at all. Joe Frazier added the inside fighter trait. That makes sense. Added the bounce back trait. Health increased from 90 to 91. Health regeneration increased from 91 to 92. Really? Health recovery increased from 90 to 92. Stamina increased from 93 to 94. Endurance increased from 92 to 94. Agility increased from 87 to 88. Movement speed increased from 86 to 88. Hook modifier increased from 93 to 95. Guard increased from 87 to 88. And courage increased from 91 to 94. Now, I'm not aware of the logic behind these changes. Perhaps these are relative to when Joe Frazier fights the likes of an Ali or Tyson Fury. But Joe Frazier was already like an unmovable rock when playing with non OP fighters. But we'll have to put this to the test. Joe Lewis added the bomber trait, added the sting like a bee trait, removed the powerhouse trait, removed the right hand bomb trait. Now stamina regeneration increased from 89 to 91. Endurance increased from 91 to 92. Agility reduced from 92 to 91. We need more reductions, that's for sure. Movement speed reduced from 92 to 90. Left hand power increased from 83 to 87, but right hand power reduced from 91 to 89. Jab modifier increased from 83 to 87. Straight modifier increased from 86 to 92. Chin resistance increased from 86 to 88. Body resistance increased from 82 to 86. What? Okay, I think that's a really bad move, but okay. Courage increased from 87 to 91. Listen, Joe Lewis has terrible exploits regarding the shots he can take to his body and keep on pushing forward. But again, we'll just have to put this to the test. Tyson Fury, stamina reduced from 95 to 90, stamina regeneration reduced from 94 to 91, and stamina recovery reduced from 97 to 91. To be fair, Tyson Fury does have good stamina in real life. Endurance reduced from 91 to 89, left hand power reduced from 92 to 89, right hand power reduced from 96 to 91, jab modifier reduced from 93 to 91, counter punch modifier reduced from 96 to 92. Guarding reduced from 95 to 93. Excellent. Body resistance reduced from 95 to 93. And courage reduced from 99 to 98. A lot of high ranking players are going to be unhappy with these changes, which I think is great. My boy Joe Joyce added the third wind trait. Health increased, yes, from 83 to 88. Health regeneration increased from 78 to 84. Head health increased from 84 to 87. Body health increased from 85 to 87. Stamina increased from 85 to 87. Stamina recovery increased from 83 to 85. Conditioning increased from 82 to 85. Endurance increased from 83 to 89. Movement speed increased from 78 to 80. Left hand power increased from 83 to 86. Right hand power increased from 89 to 90 and counter punch modifier increased from 87 to 89. Now despite Joe Joyce's recent loss in real life, this man is a tank and these value changes were much needed. Great job Steel City. Rocky Marciano added the granite chin trait. Stamina increased from 90 to 95. Stamina regeneration increased from 89 to 82. Stamina regeneration increased from 89 to 92. Stamina recovery increased from 87 to 92. Conditioning increased increased from 87 to 92, endurance increased from 88 to 92, agility reduced from 97 to 95, movement speed reduced from 96 to 92, left hand power increased from 84 to 86, hook modifier reduced from 94 to 92, straight modifier increased from 87 to 93, power punch modifier increased from 90 to 92, counter punch modifier increased from 89 to 91, courage increased from 91 to 93. Alexander Usyk. Health increased from 90 to 92. Health recovery increased from 89 to 91. Stamina increased from 86 to 93. Stamina regeneration increased from 89 to 91. Stamina recovery increased from 88 
82, conditioning increased from 87 to 91, endurance increased from 87 to 91, movement speed increased from 90 to 92. Roy Jones Jr. in heavyweight, health reduced from 92 to 86, health regeneration reduced from 88 to 86, head health reduced from 87 to 85, and body health reduced from 92 to 90. Yeah, I like these changes to Jones in heavyweight. So the final fighter changed Sean Porter at welterweight, added the inside fighter trait, added the bounce back trait, overall adjusted from 83 to 84, stamina increased from 83 to 90, wow, stamina regeneration increased from 86 to 90, stamina recovery increased from 85 to 89, conditioning increased from 83 to 88, endurance increased from 82 to 87, movement speed increased from 82 to 87, and courage increased from 82 to 88. Those are huge changes for Sean Porter. Let's see if it's an improvement or detriment to his opponents. We move on to bug fixes. And since there are so many of them, I'm only gonna focus on those which affect gameplay. Fixed an issue with lunging punches not registering against dazed opponents. Fixed an issue with Muhammad Ali's movement looking unnatural. Fixed an issue with Muhammad Ali's clinch. Fixed an issue regarding headshots being counted incorrectly in totals. Fixed an issue that meant body damage was not being calculated correctly and as a result, players would struggle to daze or knock down an opponent with body punches. Fantastic, this is an issue that has been brought up in most of my videos. Great job, Steel City. Fixed an issue where players were unable to cut their opponents in quick fights and fixed an issue with taking a knee resulting in an instant loss. We move on to venues. We have added a brand new venue to the game. Welcome to Kuritsu Arena, a beautiful Japanese inspired pentagonal shaped venue. Kuritsu means discipline. So be sure to show off your ring control and boxing mastery when you step between the ropes. Now let's move on to what we've all been waiting for, confirmation from Steel City on how they're dealing with long-term issues such as cheating, spamming and online stability. Starting with cheating, we know that running into cheaters online is frustrating and we want to make sure you know that cheaters will never be welcome in Undisputed. We're working hard to address the issue and we have a plan in place, but it's taking longer than we'd like. We know that running into cheaters online is frustrating. We want to make sure you know that cheaters will never be welcome in Undisputed. We're working hard to address the issue and we have a plan in place, but it's taking longer than we'd like. We will implement a third party anti cheat to ensure cheaters are properly rooted out from online play. This unfortunately requires us to rework some of our back-end systems before we can implement the anti-cheat, which means the solution is still multiple updates away. And with that, I'll say this. The fact that you've been specific regarding an anti-cheat system is for me personally all the reassurance I need. And that's why non-vague communication is so important between the creators and the consumers. We move on to body uppercut spam. Players are able to repeatedly use the body uppercut without much consequence, leading to unbalanced fights. We're currently testing two solutions internally, a change to the body uppercut targeting and a change to body blocking that we hope to ship in the next game update. Better late than never, that's great news. Online stability. We're continuing to work to improve online stability and want to ensure we get it right because we know how frustrating it can be to play with desync or to be disconnected from a fight. Improving this is a big task which requires a lot of work and testing and our investigations point to any improvement being a few updates away. To that end we're also adding additional resources to our online team as well as engaging third-party experts to help us get to the best long-term solution for online play. Again detailed communication is is everything. Now that we know what is specifically being planned, much of the conspiracies floating around should be laid to rest. I will be testing these updates later in the week, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Based on what I've read, I want to give a big thank you to Steel City for remaining dedicated to Undisputed and not folding under pressure. The only reason why YouTubers like myself put you under the fire is because one, bad press is good press, and two, I'm fully aware how much potential Undisputed has to being the greatest boxing game ever made. And to everyone watching, let me know in the comment section what you think of these updates and if you've tested them, fill me in on the good and the bad in the comments below. As always, take care guys, see you soon, peace.